So when we're identifying reactions, there are things we look for, such as the formation of a solid, a solid forming. We actually have a, a special name for this, and we call that a precipitation reaction. So let me give you an example of a precipitation reaction. Something like 2 sodium chloride plus lead nitrate, or lead 2 nitrate, and we get two sodium nitrates and lead to chlor uh, chloride and it's a solid and so our indication here is the phases we see that a solid formed where there was only aqueous reactants so that's a precipitation reaction the next kind of reaction is an acid base reaction and these are sometimes known as neutralization reactions and that name comes from the fact that an acid and a base will neutralize to form water so an example of that would be HBr uh, hydrobromic acid and potassium hydroxide re reacting to form water and the salt get H2O and the leftover of the ions there would get potassium and bromine and this is just referred to as uh, the salt the ionic salt and here we had the formation of water from the acid and the base so when you're identifying these you just want to you want you're looking for that acidic hydrogen and you're looking for the other half of the water molecule here the hydroxide the next reaction type um, is easy to identify because it always has three parts that that are never change it's always going to be something plus molecular oxygen yields H2O and CO2. You will always get H2O and CO2 in a combustion reaction. And combustion reactions always have molecular oxygen. So then it's a matter of having something to burn. And we can have, let's say, CH4. Uh, we, we want a, a balanced equation, so we can balance it like that, let's see, and a 2 there. And so you can always recognize the combustion reaction with molecular oxygen forming water and CO2. The next reaction type is called gas evolution, and as you might guess, it is the forming of a gas. So let's look at an example equation. All right, two HBr aqueous plus Na2CO3 aqueous, and we get we get some NaBr. Aqueous, and we also get another product. Let me move this guy out of the way. We get that, plus we get H2CO3, dihydrogen carbonate. And this actually forms a solid, but only for a brief instant. It then immediately decomposes into H2O. and CO2. And so in this reaction, the formation of this intermediate leads to the formation of a gas. And there's a few intermediates that you need to be on the lookout for. If in a reaction you form H 
2s h2so3 h2co3 or nh4oh these will all immediately break into gases I guess H2S was already a gas. So you, you already formed it over here. But these guys don't form as gases, but they break into water and a gas. So these are the ones you need to be on the lookout for. So the intermediates are what you're on the lookout for. Sorry, not CO2. Or CO3, CO2. CO2 gas, and in the last case here we get H2O and NH3, ammonia gas. For the final type of reaction, it is redox or reduction oxidation. So uh, let's talk about reduction and oxidation real quick. So reduction, uh, I'll write the whole thing out for you. Reduction means the gain of electrons. So the gain of electrons. Oxidation is the opposite. Oxidation is the loss. Uh, and there's a, a mnemonic you can use to remember this um, and that go there's a couple actually oil rig and it just means uh, or it just implies oxidation is loss reduction is gain the other one is Leo Ger and these help uh, you know some people uh, once you memorize it then you know it but this helps in the beginning. Lose electrons oxidized. Gain electrons reduced. So we just want to notice the gain or the loss of an electron. And sometimes that's that's really obvious. Let me show you an example of an obvious case. Alright, in this example we have two reactants. We have copper and it's an aqueous solution and we have solid zinc. And after the reaction we have zinc that's now in aqueous solution and solid copper. How can we tell that there's an electron being transferred here? Well, take a look at copper. It's got a 2 plus charge on it. And then over here, after the reaction, it doesn't have any charge. So somewhere in this reaction, copper gained two electrons. It had been missing two electrons with a 2 plus charge, and now it's gained them back. Look at zinc. Zinc has a uh, zero charge, and before the reaction and after the reaction, it has a 2 plus charge. It's lost two electrons. And so the, uh, the species here, uh, or the chemical or the molecule, uh, in this case zinc, since it lost electrons, we're going to say it was oxidized. Because oxidation is loss. So it was oxidized, it lost its electrons. Copper, on the other hand, was reduced. Since copper gained two electrons, copper 2 plus was reduced into copper solid. Zinc was oxidized into zinc 2 plus. Lost electrons, gained electron. Okay, so this is one example of a redox reaction. You can see the charge being swapped from one species to the next. That's one way to identify a redox reaction. Another redox reaction is a combustion reaction. Combustion reactions involve molecular oxygen. And molecular oxygen is a sign of a redox reaction. When you see molecular oxygen being reacted, that means redox. But it also means, in this case, combustion because we have our combustion products. So there's some overlap um, in, in a lot of these reactions. There are neutralization reactions that are also redox reactions. In fact, 
most every kind of reaction is, is a redox reaction involving some kind of transfer of electrons. But we have other classifications as well. We like to be able to say this one forms a solid, this one forms a, a gas, this is a neutralization, and so on. So uh, combustion reaction involving molecular oxygen, or just in, involving molecular oxygen in general, uh, is a sign of a redox reaction. Uh, and there's one more sign, and that usually involves the addition or removal of hydrogens or the addition or removal of oxygens. So when you watch or when you look at a reaction, you, you pay attention to how many hydrogens and oxygens there are uh, being uh, exchanged from atoms on both sides of the, of the equation. Let me give you an example. In this example, um, we have carbon dioxide reacting with molecular hydrogen to form carbon monoxide and water. And what we can say using uh, that last definition of redox, uh, carbon here has two oxygen atoms. And over here, carbon only has one oxygen atom attached to it. So in that case, we, we say that carbon was reduced. If it loses oxygens, it's reduced. Uh, we, can, we can also say, though, that if it gains hydrogen, it's reduced. So there's two ways to be reduced. Um, let's see if anything else gets gets reduced here. Did anything else gain hydrogen? Uh, we don't really think of oxygen as gaining hydrogen, but um, let's let's look at the other way that something can be oxidized. Uh, to be oxidized, you can either gain oxygen. So if you gain oxygen, then you're oxidized. So uh, if CO was becoming CO2, then we would be, we'd say CO2. CO got oxidized into CO2. Uh, the other way to be oxidized is to lose hydrogens. So here the, C, the CO2 lost an oxygen and over here, the H2, the H2 actually gained an oxygen. So let's see if we can make sense of that. CO2 became CO. So it lost an oxygen, so it was reduced. H2 gained an oxygen. So it was oxidized. So that's that's it. These are the reaction types. You want to be able to identify them. In the next video, we'll work on actually writing precipitation reactions in more detail.